Hey there everyone, I'm Michael, and welcome to another Little Big Planet tutorial. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to do, um, how to use interactive music in an, in an interesting way in LBP. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys something cool to do with Mad Heck Mouths that I just learned in recording a previous video that I wanted to upload. In the previous video, I said I would make a video showing you guys how to make Sackbots talk. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make the player talk instead, because it's a, similar, it's a similar idea, but a little more interesting, and probably something people might not know about. So, let's get into this. The first thing that you will definitely need is a PlayStation Now connection that doesn't flash like that. Or, you know, an actual PlayStation capture card coming soon. But anyway, besides that, what we need is a sackbot. You'll want to go into the sackbot and make sure that its animation style is set to sackboy. This is going to ensure that the player doesn't hear any sackbot sounds. And you can set its, um, his, uh, not his, uh, his motion to neutral, sorry. Uh, the, the effect, or the name eluded me for a second, and I am currently, you know, having a bad case of not knowing how to little big planet. But anyway, set the animation to Sackboy and that's going to make sure that the sound effects don't sound very Sackboy. But the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into him and make sure that his circuit board is open. But what we're going to do is we're going to set his actor label, not his look at tag, but his actor label to to something that we want the player to be called. In most cases you should probably use Sackboy for this, but in in something like my Pokemon level that I'm working on, I would name this Richie, uh, because that's the name of the character you play as. But in this case, I'm going to go simple and be Sackboy. Or, you know, you could be Odd Sock or anything like that. But the important here is a Sackbot with an actor label named after what your level's player name is. So, with that done, that's the major important part. Uh, then what we need to do is we need to make sure that this sackbot follows the player. And we can do that using a follower. Um, so we can go up here and use the follower. In the follower's tweak settings, we'll want to make sure that the rate, or that the speed is at 100. Along with the in-out speed being at 100. Make sure that the acceleration is 100 per, er, that this... Yeah, the acceleration is 100% and that it is stabilized. Then for the radius, now for dynamic thermometer levels this might be a little insane but we actually do want this sack person to be infinitely loaded. We're going to set his detection range to infinite, or infinite. The angle to 360 like it is by default and the layer detection to 16. That's going to ensure that no matter where sack boy is in the level, this will be able to follow to it. Um, so in here we're going to keep this setting the same as it is, as it is. and flee rather than follow is going to be no, and we're going to make sure that we follow a character and not a tag. Now, this is where things get a little complicated for multiplayer, and I'm not going to go over multiplayer, but you might want to keep that in mind. This will always follow the main player. Um, so it's, oh whoops, I completely got rid of, so let me do that again. Let's run through this again. Speed 100%. In out speed 100%, acceleration 100%, radius infinite, angle 360, layer detection 16, and everything is fine. Now this won't really work for multiplayer, so keep that in mind. You might have to find out a different way to do it, whether it be using tagged players or something like that, and it, it's a mess. Uh, but for single player, this is going to work fine. But then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to grab an opacity tweaker. And we are going to set the opacity to 0%. And the fade time to 0 seconds. And place that on the Sackbot circuit board. When we unpause, we're going to notice, notice something peculiar. Sackbot is looking pretty transparent. If you press the preview button, now he's completely gone. He doesn't exist. He's gone. 
if we start running through the level, it might sound a little weird with the audio, but you'll notice that we are being followed by something. And if we unpause, we're gonna see Sackbot right there. He's following us. And that's ideal. What we've effectively done is we've created a Sackbot that actually follows the player everywhere the player goes. There are better ways to do this, but this is gonna work fine. That and I don't know those better ways. I'm sure there are, though. It's a little big plan. But anyway, what we want to do now is we want to create some sort of magic mouth trigger. And that's fairly simple to do. We're going to use the sticker panel trick. Make sure that the material type is set to static. Then we use the square. We can go into it and we can set the opacity to 0%. And we can grab our microchip. Then we can grab the magic mouth that we would like to have the player say. So there are a few settings that we need to take care of. First of all, we're going to make sure that we do use a speed bubble, and it can be a thought bubble, it can be a caption, it can be any of that, but I'm going to keep it as speed bubble. And we're going to make sure that we, well, we can set audio, I'm going to use a built-in audio effect. Alright, I'm gonna use the donkey sound effect, but that works, and you can enable or disable ducker. What that does is when you have background music playing, it's gonna decrease the volume of the background music while the sound is playing. Trigger radius, we don't care about. And layer detection, we don't care about. Um, so the important settings here are, are auto close. We'll keep that to yes. And skippable, we'll set that to no. Um, and then movie camera, you can set that up if you'd like, but I'm not going to. Um, and then visible in play mode, that's irrelevant. And then the actor label is the important setting, so we're going to set that to Sackboy. And we're going to make sure that we do display the actor label in the speed hole itself. And place it on the circuit board. Then, type in whatever you'd like Sackboy to say. I'm a donkey. <laughs> Alright, so we've set that up. The next thing that we're going to want is an actual player sensor, and I'm going to do things a little freaky in this. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a method for the game to actually keep the speed bubble alive. So I'm going to set up a selector here with two ports, and I'm going to set up a timer for four seconds with its input method set to start counting up. And I'm going to set my set up a player sensor here. With the player sensor, we're going to wire it or we're going to set it up so that it uses a sensible radius, one that we'll expect Sackboy to run into. Now, the way this is going to work is we are going to have the the player sensor um, set a value. We're gonna take advantage of the one shot player sensor that we saw in the music video. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an AND gate. And player sensor is gonna go into port 2 of the AND gate. And port 1 of the selector is gonna go into port 1 of the AND gate. And then port, or the AND gate is gonna go into port 2 of the selector. Port 2 of the selector is going to go into both the magic mouth input and the timer. The timer output is going to go into timer reset. 
and then to port one of the selector. So what this will do is when the selector is in port 1, which it is by default, and the player walks into this area, the selector is immediately going to go into port 2, which is going to play the magic mouth and the timer. The magic mouth is unskippable, and so the player can't close it on its own. But the timer is running for 4 seconds. So after 4 seconds, the, the timer is going to reset itself after setting the selector back into port number 1 which is going to deactivate the magic mouth and automatically close it. Now you could go even further and make this more one-shotty by going into the selector and adding a third port to it. And instead of wiring the timer into port 1, you can wire it into port 3. And that'll make it so that we can only walk into this area once. As you can see, the sack boy or the sack bot that's supposed to follow us kind of flew right into us there. So, if we go into preview mode and we walk into that area, as you can see, the sack boy's speech bubble was following us, or the the magic mouse's speech bubble was following us. I meant. And so to reset this, what we're going to need to do is we're going to make sure that we pause the game. And we're going to hover and we're going to set the selector to port number one. And then make sure you're not in range of the player selector, or the player sensor, while we're... While we're setting this up. But I'm going to take the microchip and we're going to make the circuit board there so we can see it a little more easily and see what's going on here. So we'll unpause the game, now we're going to spawn in, and... As you can see, it works really well. Um, so yeah, we've used the one-shot player sensor thingy mechanic here, and we've set it up so that when we walk in a certain area, the player is able to... to say a message. And it definitely is the player saying that message, because if we start moving around, you'll notice that the little speech arm kind of follow us, follows us around, which is really cool. You might run into this bug though if you, um, if you mess around with it too much. So you'll definitely want to pause the game. There are ways around that though, or around that though, and what we do is we create an- If you want to make this safe from you being not in pause mode, what you do is you wire the- the timer into- into port 1 of an AND gate, and port 2 of the selector into port 2 of the AND gate. And then the AND gate output into port 1 of the selector, and that's going to make sure that the game checks that we are in fact on port 2 before we try to switch it back to port 3. Or back to port 1. Oh, whoops, I messed that up. I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to keep port 1 as it was, and instead wire into port 3. That'll check if we're on port 2 before trying to switch back to port 1. As you can see, so that'll prevent issues of locked up hits and having to reset them. But anyway, um, so yeah, that works really well. Except when it doesn't for some reason. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it broke. It has, for some reason, broken completely. Why has it broken? Alright, there we go. That is weird. Okay, so, yeah, the best way to unlock this is to really just, you know, have the game paused. And then 
do that. Okay, little big planet. Whatever floats your boat. It's not working anymore, but it did work before. <laughs> that happens from time to time when I'm when I'm doing this. I think what happened here is for some reason this AND gate got wired into port three. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. That's not it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> so that happens from time to time. If if you ever mess that up, you don't want to. You don't want to deal. You don't want to do that. That's debugging for you. There we go. So yeah, now the speech bubble follows the player, and it works perfectly. Anyway, I I really hope you guys enjoyed. Anyway, that I hope you guys learned something, and as always, thanks for watching.